Big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for making this channel happen. If you also want access to my online swing dance school, consider supporting us on Patreon. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any videos I produce. If you want to get access to over 25 of my personal swing dance lessons online for free, check out the link in the description below. Now, today I'm going to be scrutinizing a new video clip. It looks like a Jack and Jill competition from Retro Weekend 2022. I'm excited to take a look at this. It's the first one I've done all week, I believe. And I uh, can't wait to give you guys my thoughts. Let's go. All right. Nice graphics. Retro weekend. Sign me up. Sign me up. I'm ready. Okay. No familiar faces. This is good. Fresh, warm bodies on the dance floor. Here we go. This is what I love about the open competition. There's so much potential in it gives me a glimpse of the future. Let's see where this is gonna go. They all have a really nice mid-tempo track. This is like my favorite tempo to dance to. Maybe you just a little faster than this, but man, love it. You can dance 10 hours straight with this type of pace. I love seeing the breaks and how people react. It kind of lets me know who are they uh, training under and uh, who's inspiring them. I've already got my eye on a couple right now. I'm gonna tell you guys who it is in a little bit. Let's see if they can keep up the momentum. They're looking good. I like this format, giving them uh, two options to kind of dance a little bit collectively, and now we're getting into it. We were friends, and now we are mortal enemies. Here's where they all get serious. Yeah. Great, great uh, organization with this couple. They have a real good balance. Okay, third couple.
I just love how they're working together with each other. Yes. So far, our favorite follower right there. She's, she's smoking it, crushing it. High five, I like that. when the tempo speeds up you guys know that some dancers are more equipped to dance to faster tempos and others are much more comfortable when it's slower yeah and I, could, I could see a lot with the tempo change that's really interesting
Yes, sir. Yeah. Open Jack and Jill competition. I love this level. Let's talk about it. Okay, guys, I'm super excited to talk about this one. That was so good and refreshing. I get a lot of questions from people regarding this uh, level of competition. They ask me, why do you like this one so much? What is it about the open Jack and Jill that's so exciting for you? Well, to put it bluntly, is it has the most opportunity. You get a chance to see the, the potential personalities of the future. And also, it's a, it's a level that's accepted as one that's more forgiving. I mean, you could have really good ideas and some poor execution in some ways, and it's kind of overlooked. Because we don't expect the open level to be advanced in all aspects of their presentation, but what should be advanced is newness. We want to see newness. And uh, it's really hard to judge this level because I, I don't really judge it so much for the craftsmanship, but I also have to because obviously we're part of a legacy and you've got to learn the things that have come before so that we can build on top of that. So in essence, for me, when I'm judging this competition, of course, at bare minimum, I have to look at the craftsmanship part. Can you do the basic jazz moves? Can you do them with your partner uh, is what I looked at. And, and ultimately, I picked one couple. I felt one couple in this competition really had it down in a way where the leader looked good and the follower looked good. But I also had to pick out my favorite follower and my favorite leader. And what made them favorite for me was the my favorite was the fact that they have the most potential to be unique. And I want to highlight them. But first, let's get into the couple. The couple I liked is this couple right here. I think they were the very first couple to come out. Uh, she had the red dress on. He had... Uh, looks like kind of a maroon color too. Yeah, just look. I mean, the, the leader is very mature and being patient, waiting for the follower, carefully signaling moves that he wants her to improvise with him on. I love that. Even here, you can see the posture of the leader's body is very controlled. He's not trying to do things that upstage his partner. And even in this little sequence, he's allowing his partner to shine here and he's repeating those sequences. Look at this, just being still says a lot at the open level. In fact, it actually makes them look like they're more advanced in their technical ability, primarily because the leader's remaining quiet in the right spot. So they're my favorite. I like their second set too, if you look at it here. You'll notice it's a little faster and they're not abdicating the thing that I liked the most, which was their technical ability. But this was the first time I got a snapshot of Charleston. Look at that Charleston connection and, con and technique. When I use that word connection, I like to say how they both are physically aligned when it comes to matching the shapes. They're, they're not like making irregular shapes in a way where it makes one of them look like they're off. They both are complementing each other well. So yeah, big, big shout out to that couple. They were my favorite overall, primarily for the craftsmanship and the maturity of the leader and the follower. So great job, guys. Great job. You didn't look like you were in the open. In fact, it looked like you were probably in the intermediate advance to advanced level Jack and Jill. Okay, let me get into my favorite follower. Now, this is interesting. My favorite follower was the girl I'd mentioned in the video. She had like a brown shirt, black pants, and she's dancing with this really cool leader. He's got a jacket with a brown hat. This is interesting because I feel... She did the best she could and was respectful to the leader's strengths. The leader had very specific strengths and was demonstrating how he wanted to set things up using those strengths. But in many cases, it didn't highlight the follower's strengths. I think her strengths, like, let's take a look at this for you. When she comes out with him, you can see uh, he's doing right hand holds. A lot of right hand pass bys, crossing over here. This is really keeping his partner in a six count pattern. And there's a lot of rotation. You don't really get a chance to see the lines of her body. She has so, so many lines. And I noticed that from her swing out. So this guy is dancing very similar to like a Balboa dancer where there's a lot of rotation. But look right here, look at that. Right there is what made her really stand out. And I wish she would have had a few more opportunities like this to be able to 
demonstrate uh, her strengths. And so that's that's the follower I love the most because I feel I feel a lot of times followers get the short end of the stick in terms of attention. And that's because they're they're having to respond to what's given to them. And in many cases, what's given to them doesn't highlight their actual strengths. So I've got to give it to her for not trying to stand out and actually ending up giving up the very thing she's supposed to be doing, which is responding to what's happening in the moment. And so even though she didn't have the best cues to make her look the best at what she does, I, it still looked amazing because I got a chance to see a glimpse of who she is whenever those swing outs were there. And I really hope she continues to work on that because, yeah, she was crushing that. That was amazing. Now, the leader I liked, let's look at this. This leader, I, I actually appreciated him for so many different reasons. Number one, his height really made him stand out. And look, you can see here as they're coming out for uh, their fast, I think it's, it wasn't the, the really fast one, but it's still a little bit mid up tempo. When he's moving, you can just see the potential of him using his lines and the length of his body to come up with really cool things in the future. I can already see it. I can already see how he's gonna be dancing and using his length. But what I really liked is the fact that he didn't mind remaining close with his partner. I love this, the little circular connection there when they're doing those Lindy circles. It's beautiful, it's really, really beautiful. Even here when they're doing these swing outs, the long legs and his ability to just sink down. Uh, was awesome. Now, I got to tell you, I preferred his dancing when it was slower. I think it really highlighted his natural abilities right now in the open level, but I feel that obviously is where his comfort zone is. As you can see here, I think he has a better grasp of the basic shapes when the tempo is slower uh, because he's, it's not forcing him to make any irregular shapes that should be shapes that are regular. I mean, there are certain things we just have to be able to maintain as leaders to make the dance identifiable, or we become too distracting. Too many shoulder movements and things like that could actually take away from the thing that actually makes us look good. And it generally has to do with us not moving as much as our partner. So this leader has huge potential. I can't wait to see how he's able to manipulate his body around his partner. Uh, with his longer arms and legs. I just see so many cool ideas and I'm, I kind of envy his height sometimes. And then sometimes I don't. Sometimes I envy the people who are really short. They can do like really cool tricks with the floor and slides. So, I mean, the, the, the best thing I can say in this is just keep going. And if you guys are watching this and you're, you're seeing some of my comments, it's interesting uh, because we're humans and we love what we do, we, we, we want as much as we try to say we don't care about what other people think, we want approval from other people. And it's very difficult when you're doing swing dancing to find that approval if you're not content and embracing the thing that makes you you. So I would encourage you, start recording yourself swing dancing a little bit and just seeing what you like and what you don't like. But I would encourage you to focus more on the part that you like. And generally, those are the things that other people say about your dancing. <laughs> of course, you're gonna say negative things about your own dancing, we all do it. But pay attention to those things because that's the, the real you. Those are the elements you wanna take with you into the future of your dance career because it's gonna become more, comf more difficult in maintaining that. Usually, that's the thing that most people get rid of and you don't wanna do that. So you have to use a lot of wisdom at this open level uh, to not get yourself discouraged and have fun. All right. So what did you guys think about this one? Who was your favorite dancer? Who was your favorite couple? Let me know in the comment section below. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Take care.